यूटिलिटी अ टर्म यूज इन द का वर्ल्ड टू डिस्क्राइब समथिंग दैट्स रगेड केपेबल एंड डिपेंडेबल बट लेटली दैट टर्म हैज बीन यूज प्रिटी लूजली इन द का वर्ल्ड हाउ एवर वी हैव नेवर सीन इट इन अ मोटरसाइकिल और एनी फॉर्म ऑफ टू व्हीलर दैट चेंजेस टूडे This is the Bigos RUV 350 and RUV stands for Riders Utility Vehicle. So let's just test that. How utilitarian is this new EV from Bigos? Let's find out. Bigos, a brainchild of RR Global, an electrical conglomerate, was established in 2020 with the goal of providing sustainable and innovative electric mobility solutions in India. Leveraging RR Global's extensive experience in the electrical industry, Bigos quickly made a mark in the electric scooter market, offering a blend of style, performance, and advanced features. Bigos emphasizes on customer satisfaction, continuous innovation, and environmental responsibility. positioning itself as a key player in the rapidly growing electric vehicle segment in India now that you know a little bit about the brand let's talk about the product the RUV 350 has been designed to look unlike any other product in its segment it is really slender and it is very slim but it still has some muscular lines a lot like a deer that's what its design has been inspired by and uh, you can really notice it in the side profile how slim yet how curvy the motorcycle is in terms of outright design it is a rather pretty bike but it is more form than function in terms of overall beauty looks are subjective but this bike is more form than beauty since it's got the highest ground clearance in its segment the longest front suspension travel in its segment and segment first 16 inch wheels alloy wheels so yes it is very practical in terms of rideability and it also has quite a lot of air ducts that channel all of the air coming into the bike through the motorcycle in towards the motor now the motor is something really special so let's talk about that this is the first time i'm seeing a motor of this kind so bear with me let's get the basics off first it's got a 3 kilowatt hour battery and the peak power of the motor is 3 0.5 kilowatts it's rated at 2.5 kilowatts and that's not what is surprising it is an in wheel hyperdrive motor what that means is that the engine and the motor basically is connected to the wheel to the rear wheel and the size of the engine is pretty much the diameter or the radius of what the wheel is which is ridiculous so the transmission and motor are mated together and they are part of the center of the wheel which means there is hardly any transmission loss and it makes it very efficient in terms of power usage so that's where i think they have gained most of uh, their claimed range and uh, yeah it is a rather impressive a uh, little motor considering the size of it and it also pushes out 165 newton meters of peak torque uh, at 0 rpm since this is electric and yeah it is a pretty cool motor i just want to feel how it actually is to ride In the short time that I had to ride this pre-production vehicle inside their industrial complex, there were a couple of things I found interesting. The RUV in sport mode was a fun little scooty with more than enough juice to ride around like a normal commuter. In ride and eco mode, however, I felt that the bike was too lethargic to live with. I found myself trailing behind the film vehicle while on eco mode and constantly having to stay in sport mode in order to ponder around between 50 and 60 kilometers per hour. The RUV 350 handled the small bumps I got to go over rather well. Thanks to the stiff chassis architecture and long travel suspension, the bike can take a decent beating. So even if you're a little negligent on speed bumps, it should be fine. But I did have a small issue whilst hitting patches of mud. Upon releasing the rear brake and going back on the throttle in slippery conditions, the motor throws a small fit that makes the bike judder. 
This could be a brake calibration and throttle map issue which can be solved through software and it also could be a singular problem in my scooter since I didn't hear any of the other journals complaining about this matter. The brakes though are something I am concerned about. During emergency braking, the front drum brakes just didn't have enough bite to bring the scooter to stop at a safe enough distance, which could be a call for disaster and a set of front discs could easily mitigate this issue. But the RUV stands for Rider's Utility Vehicle. So how utilitarian is it? When it comes to utilitarian, this bike tries to check quite a few boxes. It is rather practical and there are a lot of cubby holes in uh, the RUV350. So in the front, the cubby hole is massive. So you can keep, I don't know, 10 phones. And you've also got a USB charger to charge your preferred phone. And you'll also have access to it, no problem. There is also a cubby hole in the floorboard, which isn't waterproof. So be careful of what you keep inside. And it is more than enough space for you to keep your charger. So if you need extra space under your seat, you can definitely use that for your charger and you're not going to have any form of space issues. The under seat storage is a little cramped, but you can still fit a half face helmet, no problem at all, which I think isn't a thing in the EV sector anyway. So this is still bigger than its competition, which is good news. And of course, the back seat is rather comfortable. It's a nice long seat. So your passenger will also be very comfortable. Now, talking about your comfort, the rider's triangle is super relaxed. There is no form of strain in the shoulder. Your hands are basically as close to the length of your knees. So you can just keep your shoulders nice and relaxed and you will still have your hands on the handlebar with an upright back. You don't need to lean forward in any form or manner. Taking corners is super effortless and there is a lot of space even for people with bigger feet. And yeah, even if you've got bigger feet, there still is space for a small grocery bag if you're on the grocery run. So yes, this is a very practical uh, scooter and you're definitely going to find utility from it. It's really difficult to give a pre-production vehicle a verdict, but all in all, I think this is a really good idea. There's never been a motorcycle or an electric vehicle like this in the market, and it definitely should catch some attention because it is just so practical. However, we don't know the price, we don't know its after-sales performance, and we don't know how good the customer experience is going to be. So there is a lot to be wondered about. But if I go by what the motorcycle is, then they are on the right trajectory. And this is definitely something that's quite original in the market, which is why I'm looking forward to see how it does. That's it from my end. I'll see you guys in the next one. Do let us know your thoughts on the RUV350 and would you pick it up over any of its competitors? Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.